Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Keith Haywood. I am the Community Partnerships and Events Manager of Inspire NOLA Charter Schools. And I would like to welcome you to the April Inspire NOLA Parent Workshop entitled Preparing to Leave the Nest. How does your junior prepare for, senior, for their senior year? Um, we have presenter and career and college and career counselor Jared Harris here to give the presentation today. And before I bring him to the front, I'd just like to give you a little background on him. Uh, Jared Harris has been giving back to the youth through education and mentorship since 2014, when he had the opportunity, opportunity to become marketing director of Take the Lead Foundation. Take the Lead is a nonprofit organization that provides job readiness skills, financial literacy, reading, and many more to the youth throughout the city of New Orleans. Their programs serve in inner city schools such as Warren Easton, Joseph S. Clark, The Net, and Einstein Charter. During Jared's time with Take the Lead, he helps students create their own path through education by finding the things that they were passionate about and channeling their energy in a positive way. Today, Jared serves as Vice President of the Board for Take the Lead and looks to continue uplifting the marketing and development of the organization for the greater good of the youth that it supports. During Jared's initial start with Take the Lead, he also received opportunities to become a bro with another local nonprofit entity entitled Brothers Empowered to Teach. Jared had the pleasure of serving as one of Brothers Empowered to Teach his first bros, as well as providing his marketing skills and expertise to the company when they first needed it. Working with the company, <clears throat> working with the company that's purpose is to increase the less than 3% of black men that are in education in our own country has influenced Jared to take his career further by serving as an ambassador counselor for Dillard mm -hmm. University for the past four years. He has helped increase the school's enrollment by 100 students every year and has received an all-star award from President Dr. Walter Kimbrough as he was voted by student body for being one of the main reasons students attend the university. During his time at Dillard, Jared has served as the California Club Advisor and Sophomore Class Council Advisor. He has recently received his Master's in Fashion Marketing from LIM College, and now Jared currently works for his first alma mater, St. Augustine High School, as the 10th and 11th grade counselor. In the near future, Jared plans to blend his love for fashion and education to conti by continuing to guide counsel and counseling young students to pursue their dreams and passions, all while pursuing his own dreams and passions, as well as continuing to offer his marketing skills and expertise to those that in need. And with that being said, I would like to introduce our guest and presenter, Jared Harris. Uh, thank you so much, Keith. I, I really appreciate that. That was a beautiful introduction. Uh, I just want to say uh, also thank you to all the parents and students that are joining us tonight. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, guide you and give you some advice on this college process uh, for your son or your daughter, uh, especially if they're going into their senior year next year. I'm gonna go over a lot of things that they should um, begin to prepare for and actually should um, be in the process of doing now. So we'll get into that. Uh, Keith, uh, do I have access to share my screen? I just wanna make sure before I present. see okay i think i do okay let's see okay All right, can everyone see uh, the presentation that I have here? If you uh, just wanna put something in the chat or if someone just, okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Amber, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, all right, so let's get started. So preparing to leave the nest, a senior's guide to prepare for college. So moms, you see this picture here, of this mother holding on to her son and looking at her son, well, this is that moment where you have to realize it is time to let your young man go and trust that you have raised him well. 
uh, to take care of his responsibilities, you know, because he has to leave the nest and that time is coming soon. And for any of my dads who are on uh, the call tonight, you also have to let that hand go and trust that you've shown him the way and that he will grow up to be the young man that you wanted him to be and that you know he will be. And so uh, same goes for my daughters out there as well. So parents, you know, get ready to let them go and push them to take care of their responsibilities and take care of the things that need, they need to do ahead of time for their future. All right, so let's get started. So a couple of topics I'll be discussing tonight. Uh, one for sure, applying to college, uh, standardized testing, uh, the importance of building a relationship with your college counselor, um, financial aid and scholarships, uh, letters of recommendations and personal essays, uh, the importance of building a college resume, uh, attending college fairs and college tours, uh, covering important factors in choosing your school, and then most of all, uh, choosing your college. And so these will be some of the topics that I will discuss tonight. All right, so let's get started. First, I just want to start off with this quote because I thought it was um, such great timing for the presentation tonight. Uh, education is the passport for the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Uh, this is a quote by Malcolm X. And so that's literally what uh, we have to get our students to do, prepare for it today and not wait for it tomorrow and not put it off for the next day and the next day. All right, so applying to college. So. Uh, if your son or daughter is going into their junior or going into their senior year from their junior year, uh, they should have established a GPA and a test score that will grant them college admission uh, and scholarships to the, to the institutions they are uh, interested in attending. And so some great resources uh, when applying to colleges could be uh, for one, going through that school's website. Some of the schools uh, that you will apply to, they will waive the application fee. Uh, also, the Common App uh, is a great one. Doing the Common App, pretty much you can do this one application that will go to just about any university or college you're interested in attending. And then there's also something called the Black Common App, which is the EDU Inc. app, which is specifically for HBCU. So it's the version of Common App where you can fill it out and basically send it to any HBCU you're interested in attending. Okay, uh, next, standardized testing. So uh, going into your senior year, uh, you want to have the score that you need to get uh, acceptance and scholarships to the university or college of your choice. However, we know that some of our students may struggle with standardized testing. Uh, I know I did as a student. Um, I attended St. Augustine High School, which where I'm currently the 10th and 11th grade academic counselor. Uh, I had to get a tutor. Um, I had to get a tutor. I was a student athlete. And I had to take the test a few times uh, to be eligible to uh, qualify for tops. And so, you know, if you're at home encouraging uh, your son or your daughter, tell them to keep pushing and stay consistent. Um, they do uh, have ACT fee waivers, which have been given to the state. So I uh, oblige you to ask your counselor at your school, see if those waivers have come in. Um, and also uh, just seek any uh, ACT uh, prep that you can find online. Uh, I know at, uh, at my school, we have ACT boot camps on the weekends. We have an ACT tutor that comes to work with our student athletes uh, throughout the week. Uh, we also have an ACT prep class, you know, and so a lot of these things can be helpful in helping you prepare uh, to take that exam. So um, just wanna go over that. Uh, next, next topic we're gonna get into is uh, building a relationship with your college counselor. Uh, I cannot stress how important uh, that is. Uh, me being a former college admissions counselor with Dilly University, where I worked for five years, uh, and I built a very strong network and connection with a lot of admissions counselors across the country, uh, specifically for HBCU. So if, uh, if any of your uh, sons or daughters are interested, uh, and if any students who are on the call, if you're interested in attending uh, any HBCU, uh, please feel free to contact me and I'll have my contact information at the end of the presentation. Um, but I have a lot of resources that could be helpful to you, depending on what school you're interested in attending. But more importantly, uh, in building, you know, back to building that relationship, um, of course, by now going into your senior year, you should have a, a great relationship with your high school counselor. And if you don't, I would uh, advise you to, to begin that relationship now. 
Uh, but mo more importantly as well is while having that great relationship with your high school counselor, you also need to start to build that relationship with your college admissions counselor, because this is the first person that's going to basically walk you through that process of how to get into that dream school that you want to attend. And they will help you matriculate uh, as you navigate through your first journey there, which I think is so important, just like your high school counselor has helped you matriculate through your high school years. This is the same for your college admissions counselor. And I know this because I've done it. And so uh, this is why it's so important to make sure that you build that relationship with both counselors so that they can do the best for you with helping you get into the institution of your choice. Uh, next, financial aid and scholarships. So uh, just going over the general term, financial aid is basically federal government money uh, that students can receive in the form of loans, uh, grants, scholarships, and work studies. So uh, with, with the loans, you have the unsubbed and the sub loan. Uh, one loan occurs interest and the other one, you literally just have to pay back what you owe. And so uh, in most events, we want our students to get those grants and those scholarships and not those loans, or even have opportunity for work study, which is basically when you have opportunity to uh, work a certain position or a certain department, uh, which could be a good look for your resume with job experience while you're in college, but it also helps to pay your college tuition. Um, so those are different forms of financial aid. So first and foremost, um, going into your senior year, you, you have to fill out your FAFSA. And October 1st is the uh, day when it opens up for you to apply. So make sure that you mark that date on your calendar, October 1st, apply for FAFSA. Now, uh, you see here, I have uh, the CSS. Um, some people uh, may be familiar, some people may not. Uh, you have to have a CSS profile when applying for the Ivy League University. So the CSS is a college scholarship service. So basically, if you're if you are um, applying for a school like Princeton, one of our students just uh, committed to Princeton, uh, or if you or if you're applying to uh, Harvard or a Tulane University, uh, this would be something that you would have to create uh, create this profile in order to get certain scholarships at those institutions. Um, Sorry. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. So completing uh, completing the FAFSA. So uh, once that October first date comes around, you want to make sure that you fill out your FAFSA and send it to the schools that you've already been admitted to, and the schools that you uh, have applied to but have not yet been admitted to. And this is important of doing this early so that you can get those financial aid award packages back, and so that you can start narrowing your decision down on which school you want to go to uh, based on the cost. Uh, to see which one is uh, more feasible for you. And so this is why it's so important to do this early and not wait to the last minute. Now, if you uh, need any assistance, I know we may have some first generation uh, parents and students. Uh, if you need any assistance, I encourage you to attend uh, any financial aid workshops that your high school uh, may send out through newsletters or emails. Um, also, I'm available to, available to speak with you on a one on one if you need extra assistance. Um, like I said, I'll be sharing my contact information. Uh, so if you need any extra assistance once that time comes around, I'll be happy to help. Uh, also scholarships, please encourage your, uh, please encourage your son or daughter to apply for those scholarships now and, and they should have been doing this for their entire uh, high school career. But if not, uh, then most importantly now. Uh, start applying for scholarships. Uh, I left a few websites here, but I promise you I have a plethora of websites and resources that I can send to you. Uh, so just feel free to contact me. Uh, once I'm done, I'll leave my information. But I left here uh, uncf.org, uh, fastweb.com, and scholarships.com. And also make sure that you're paying attention to TOPS. Uh, nothing has changed as far as the requirements uh, as of now. Um, so I believe it's still a 20 and a 3.0 uh, to get the minimum. And so that's what we want to aim for for our students, if they, especially if they're thinking about staying home uh, for college. We want to make sure that they get tops. All right. Let's see. OK, so these are just some quick facts I wanted to point out. 86% uh, of students are employed uh, with bachelor's degrees or higher. Uh, so 
what, that's one thing we want to do is make sure that we encourage um, our young people to go to college, to get a college degree, because this increases their chances of getting employed and getting that job of their dreams or, uh, or the career opportunity that they want to get into. Uh, also, 82% of graduates find jobs six months after graduating with their bachelor's degree. Um, so this is why another fact of why it's so important that we make sure that we get our kids into college. Okay, letters of recommendation and personal essay. Okay, so um, by now or going into your senior year, uh, you should have two letters of recommendation and a personal statement. Uh, most colleges and universities, they will require uh, with their admissions process, two letters of rec and a personal statement. Now, if you have not uh, received your letters of recommendation or if you're not sure on how to request one, I would say to simply go to uh, your counselor's office, your high school counselor, and just schedule a meeting with them, send them an email, give them a call, sit down, and, and just let them know, say, hey, I'm trying to apply to this uh, school. And most of the time, the schools are going to require uh, a counselor uh, recommendation, and they're going to require one from a teacher. So make sure that you go and find that teacher that you know will speak highly of you uh, and, and that you're doing well in their class so that that recommendation looks very well to that uh, school that you're trying to get into. And then uh, what's your personal essay? Um, you wanna have a minimum of three to five paragraph uh, essay, uh, but no more than a page. Uh, and you, you know, the top of, uh, type of topics you wanna cover, you know, you wanna let that university know who you are as a person, uh, let them know your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, uh, you know, why you want to attend their school, what you want to major in. Um, let them know some of your pitfalls, your downfalls, some of the things that you've overcome and some of the obstacles that have been in your life to let them know who you are as a person and uh, the type of student that you can be at the university. Uh, and so those type of things really help when it comes down to a decision of maybe you didn't meet the GPA requirements or the test score requirements, but you had strong recommendations and you had a strong personal statement. And this school is like, hey, uh, this is a kid I really want to take a chance on. You know, so sometimes those little things really do go a long way and they matter, uh, which is why it's so important to make sure you take care of this now. So going into senior year, you should already have this completed. If not, get on it now. Um, because most schools are going to require this information for the admissions process. Okay, next. Uh, building your college resume. Uh, so this is very important. And this is really important for you and just kind of getting in that field as a professional, getting prepared for college and getting prepared for internships and job opportunities, which there are some that you can do right now while you're in high school, which would be good to put on your college resume, as well as extracurricular activities, such as any sports teams uh, that you play on in high school, uh, any academic clubs, any student government, any community service, uh, also any awards that you may have been, uh, that you may have received during your time in school, uh, honors awards or scholarships, also, like I mentioned, internships, job shadowing, summer college prep programs, leadership organizations. And then most of all, you wanna make sure that you put your cumulative GPA, your test scores, uh, any skills or certifications you may have uh, gained throughout your high school career. All of these are, are great things and they're important things to put on your college resume. And so uh, if you need help with putting your resume together, uh, if you need any examples, um, I can send you, I can show you. I, uh, like I said, I'll have my contact information at the end and please feel free to reach out to me. I'm definitely here to help. This is something I'm passionate about. I've been doing for years, so I don't mind uh, giving out my time to any student any or any parent in need. Uh, okay, and so I just also wanted to go over um, some quick professional tips, especially for any students that are here. Uh, certain colleges or universities you're interested in attending, they'll have an interview process. And, you know, there's a few common questions that most schools will ask you. And this is just a general rule of thumb for any interview uh, that you may uh, have if you're getting a job opportunity. The first question most uh, companies will ask is, can you tell me about yourself? And so this is the time where, you know, you don't just say, oh, my favorite color is blue and um, I like to eat uh seafood you know this is the time where you tell them you know i'm a hard worker i'm very determined very passionate person um you know i want to study biology i want to become a doctor i want to save lives you know 
these are some of the things that will be uh, great things to point out when they actually, you know, tell me about yourself, you know, kind of seize the moment to uh, take advantage of it and show them why you're interested in attending. So other schools will ask uh, further questions like, what do you know about the college or university? So make sure that you're well read, that you've done your research, you know when the school has been founded, you know what programs are known for, uh, you know about their extracurricular activities so that uh, you can have some great things to say in that interview to impress that school. Uh, also, of course, like I said, they'll ask, why do you want to enroll with us? You can knock that question out just when they ask you to tell them about yourself. Um, also, how do you deal with stressful situations? Schools want to know, you know, uh, you know, if you get into a tough time in school, will you just give up and leave their school because schools are big on retention or will you pick your head up, fight, push through and, and get the grades that you need to pass and move on. And so that's a that's another big factor. Uh, also, where do you see yourself in five years? Because if you think about it, for most programs, you know, it's a four year program, unless you're studying to be a doctor um, or a nurse or engineer. Uh, but most programs is four years. So they want to know within that five years, that year after you finish school, what, what will you be doing? You know, back to that 86% employment rate uh, for those who graduate with bachelor's degrees. Uh, they want to know where you'll be working at and what you intend to do. You know, so having that plan and thinking about it now and preparing it now um, will make things better for you in the long run once you get to this point. Okay. Um, how to prepare for an interview. And this is important, especially for any students that are on the call uh, tonight. Uh, what to wear, as you can see, this young man is dressed professional. He's ready uh, to answer all questions for his interview. Also developing a question list. So uh, most interviewers, they always have all the questions, but you should have questions for them as well. And that, and that lets them know that you've done uh, some research. You took some time and consideration to thinking about certain things to ask them that most people wouldn't which would also impress them as well. And then also having your responses prepared. So you know the questions that they're gonna ask, just like the general questions that I uh, just went over, have those answers written down so that you feel prepared and it just flows naturally once they ask that question. And then lastly, just staying calm, cool and collected. Uh, some people may think right now on this call that I'm, I'm very calm, cool and collected. And deep down inside, I was nervous getting on the call. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's always good to be nervous um, because, you know, you stay on your toes, you stay on your feet, you're ready, but also trying to find that balance of staying calm and cool and poised throughout the entire time is the perfect match and uh, the personality uh, you want to have when, you know, preparing for an interview and, and going into your interview. All right, um, switching gears. So common mistakes high school seniors make, uh, which I think is, is just something that carries on to all of us in our life as well, even in adulthood. Uh, refusing to do networking. Um, as a high school senior, this is very, very important. Um, back to building that relationship with your high school counselor, building that relationship with the college admissions counselor at the school that you're interested in attending networking and building that relationship can help open doors for you to that school you never know by building that relationship that admissions counselor could tell you about a scholarship nobody else knows about that'll get you some more money to go to their school you know so that's why it's so important to build that relationship or building that relationship with your high school counselor because hey they have connections here at this school at that school at this school all you have to do is say hey where do you want to go and they're going to help you get in and that's why you know it's, it, it goes back to the term of Closed mouths don't get fed, you know? So make sure you connect with people, build those relationships, because you never know where that could lead you. Uh, next, procrastination. Um, and this is probably the biggest one amongst our young people. Wait until the last minute to apply for school, waiting for the last minute to do your FAFSA, wait until the last minute to apply for scholarships, waiting for the last minute to choose your school, and you don't want to be in that situation. Uh, and then having to fall back and go to community college because you couldn't get your life together. You couldn't figure out where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do. And now you're stuck in community college and you could have been where you wanted to be, you know? And so uh, just think about that. Uh, next, be ready to ask questions. Um, this also goes along with networking. Uh, just having the courage to speak up, you know, for your dreams, for your future. This is your life. So you know, say what you want, ask what you want, get informed, get all the information that you need so that you can make that best decision. 
Uh, and lastly, don't hesitate to follow up. So if you emailed your, your high school counselor or you called them or you emailed the college uh, admissions counselor at the school you want to attend and they didn't email you back or they didn't call you back, follow up with them in 24 hours or 48 hours. Give them that professional courtesy and then follow back up with them and say, hey, I'm really interested in attending this school or I really need your help with doing this. I'm really serious about my future and where I want to attend. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, their, their attention will shift, their response will shift. You'll start to see that communication open up and you'll start to see uh, things will go the way that you want them to, but you gotta push for it, you gotta fight for it, you gotta stay consistent, you gotta pursue your dreams and pursue what you want. Uh, okay, next, uh, college, college fairs and tours and visits. Okay, so, um, Going into your senior year, you should you should have some schools kind of narrowed down maybe to your top three. Uh, if not, if you still are unsure, you want to make sure that you attend as many college fairs as possible. I know due to COVID, uh, that was a, probably a big struggle this year. Um, I know a lot of things have been virtual, just like we are today. Um, but as things start to open up and uh, schools start to have campus tours again, they start to have events definitely start uh, to pay attention uh, from your school when they send out college fairs. Uh, please do not take this lightly. Uh, go and attend these fairs as many as, as possible to get informed about a lot of schools so that you can figure out where you want to attend and what's the right school for you. And then once you find that school, going into campus tours and visits, um, I, don't, I don't recommend uh, choosing a school without having done a visit. I've seen students do it before and I've seen it work out. And for a lot of students I've seen it didn't work out and it's because they didn't do a campus tour. And, and parents, um, you know, if, if your son or daughter has these uh, schools that they really, really are interested, you know, please take the time out to plan a road trip, spring break, summer. Uh, also know some uh, tour companies that tour kids around every summer. Uh, to visit different colleges and universities, I can give you uh, those resources as well. Uh, but you know, it could be a great trip. It could be a good family time, and just giving them that opportunity to figure out what that school is like as far as the atmosphere and the environment, and and if it's the right fit for them. And then also just for you as parents to see, okay, this is where my child is going to be for four years. You know, do I feel comfortable with this place? Do I think it's safe? Do I think they're going to get a great education? You know, checking it out for yourself because I'm pretty sure most parents will all will be invested in this. Uh, and we're probably going to be coming out of our pockets uh, for something. Uh, and so, you know, you want to make sure that your son or daughter is going to a really good school and that you feel comfortable about that school. So college tours and visits are very, very important. Now, if you're in the middle of your senior year now and you still haven't figured out what school you want to attend, here are two college fairs that are coming up. Um, they're called the Big Future Day College Fairs, which are hosted by College Board. And there's one on April 18th and there's one on April 29th. And they'll have uh, colleges and universities all over the country on both of these calls. And so this would be a great time for you to go out there, ask questions, start networking, and seeing uh, if there's a school out there for you. All right. Uh, okay, here's another quote I wanted to leave you all with. Um, your education is only the beginning. Uh, you may be graduating high school or you will be graduating high school um, after you complete that senior year, but the thirst for learning should never stop, which is why getting a college degree is so important. All right, so important factors in choosing the right school for you. Um, these are my the three biggest factors for me, what I think uh, is important in choosing a school for you. So first and foremost, academic programs. Just, just think about the reason why you're going to college. You're going to college to get a degree in something that you love, something that you're passionate about learning, right? So you wanna make sure that that school has one of the best programs in the country. So like, let's say you wanna um, study pharmacy, you wanna be a pharmacist, then of course, one of your top picks should be Xavier University, right? Um, so it's just thinking about that, making sure that the school that you want to attend, that they're, that they're a school that's known for that specific academic program. Uh, second uh, major factor, 
uh, costs, the financial costs to attend that school of your dream. So making sure that you've received enough financial aid, making sure that you've applied for scholarship and have received enough scholarships to help cover that cost. And then weighing out whether or not that cost is worth um, what the school is listing, you know? Uh, so if that school costs $50,000 a year and you're looking at that school and you visited that school and, and is it worth $50,000 to you? You know, is this education worth it to you? And that's something that you really have to ask yourself. And I think that's why that's definitely one of the other important factors in choosing a school. Uh, lastly, uh, doing that campus tour, like I mentioned before, and seeing the environment. So uh, whether or not it's a, a big school or a mid-sized school or a small school, whether or not you want that kind of environment, seeing the people at the school, the students, the faculty, the staff, how they interact, how they interact with you. And if it's a place that you can really see yourself at, a place that you really feel like you fit in. Um, I think these are all the biggest uh, three components in choosing the right school for you. Uh, and so definitely please take heed to that. Uh, next. And lastly, um, choosing your college. Um, and you know, because that's the most important thing. Um, and that's the goal. That's what that's what we're looking at. So we're prepared for this final day right here, which is choosing your college. So by May 1st, at the latest is when you should commit to the college or university of your choice and pay your deposit, uh, pay your enrollment fee. And so uh, whether that's College of Engineering, College of Business, uh, at whatever university you're interested in attending, whether it's Dillard University or Boston University, um, choose your college and make sure that you've made a sound decision and an informed decision. Now there's also early decision, uh, which is sometime in November uh, and certain schools that you're interested in attending, they will require early decision sort of to lock in certain scholarships. And that's kind of how they get you to make that early commitment, which could be good, um, but just make sure that you've done all your research, you visited the campus, you received your financial aid award and you have everything that you need um, before you say, hey, I'm going to commit to this school. And uh, I just want to recap um, everything that I just went over. So you're looking at a high school senior college timeline. And that's basically, um, you know, what I've given you today. So when you look at everything, you want to start off with applying for that school, applying for the school that you're interested in attending and coming out of your junior year. So as soon as you hit the summer, so if school lets out in May and summer starts in June, Make sure you get a copy of your uh, your final transcript from your counselor, make copies of it and send it to the schools that you're interested in attending and fill out those applications. You can get started as early as the summer. So then once schools start, you will probably start getting the accepting letters already. Um, also, uh, making sure that you've, uh, if, you, if you don't have the uh, ACT score that you need, that you continue testing throughout the school year uh, complete your letters of recommendation and your personal essay. That's something that you should be completing throughout the school year. And it's honestly something that you should have uh, completed by the beginning of the school year. So you're sending them out soon as school starts or as early as the summer when you're uh, beginning those applications. Uh, building that relationship with your college counselor, that's gonna be ongoing throughout the school year. And then coming into October 1st, making sure that you complete your FAFSA uh, for all of the schools that you wanna attend. Um, you know, sending it out to those schools and making sure that you're applying for scholarships, which is something that you should be doing right now and throughout your entire time until you graduate. Uh, also, uh, attending college fairs and tours uh, and visits to different schools that you're interested in attending. That is also something that should be ongoing throughout your uh, time, throughout your senior year. And I think it would be a great time to start now and start this summer to get a head start and see as many schools as possible. And then lastly, uh, as I stated, uh, choosing your college. Um, and, you know, there's two times. So early on, you have uh, starting in November, you have early decision. Uh, if you don't want to commit, then you have at the latest May 1st. Some schools are rolling admissions, so they'll accept you at any time as long as you haven't went past the uh, late registration deadline. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's just uh, a recap on today's presentation.
Uh, I just want to say thank you all for having me. Thank you all for taking the time to uh, listen to some of the tips uh, and just take some of that advice that I've given tonight. And if you want to um, speak further or reach out to me later, I'll share my contact information. But now I want to hand it back over to Keith. I know he had some last minute announcements that he wanted to make for you all. So I'm going to hand it back over to him. And then we can open it up for a Q&A if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Jared. Uh, great presentation. You know, once again, you killed it and showing everything that you knew. Uh, but yeah, the, the announcement that I had was once again that Inspire NOLA will, is open for um, it opened for round two during one app. We have seats available at 42, Capito, Andrew Wilson, and Dwight Eisenhower. Um, also, for anyone out there who you may know some young children, on Saturday, May 1st, we'll be holding a student recruitment event on at the Broad Theater. We'll be having a screening of Trolls at 10.30 a.m. So if you just go to our Twitter or Facebook, we have a post where you can register and you can just let people know. But uh, that was all from the announcement side and for I'll pass it back to Jared for Q&A. All right, thank you, Keith. Uh, so yes, anybody, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop something in the chat or feel free to speak out if you have any questions. I'm going to go to the slide. You can take down my contact information. Um, that's my email, it's my personal email. Feel free to um, send me a message if you have any questions. I think we have someone. Thank you, Lauren. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. Thank you as well. I hope um, you, I hope you ladies uh, really took something from this presentation. And if there's anything I can do for y'all in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, send me an email. Shoot me a message. Um, I'll definitely get back to you. <laughs>